In today's video, everybody, I will be discussing the latest stimulus news and information. White House officials are holding informal discussions with both conservative and liberal policy experts to gather more support for President Biden's legislative agenda. The IRS accidentally sent out extra stimulus checks to some Americans, and now some people have to send them money back. This is your fourth stimulus check update and daily news report. I hope all of you guys are having a great day, and welcome back to the channel. And I, along with members of this committee, believe the government should invest in our seniors. And that starts with making sure that the Social Security Administration offices are fully funded so that seniors can get their hard-earned Social Security checks. Now, according to sources familiar with the situation, senior White House officials are holding informal discussions with both conservative and liberal policy experts to garner support for proposals, including the administration's American Families Plan, specifically the long-term extension of the revamped child tax credit. However, the White House is adamant that while President Biden welcomes bipartisanship, the administration officials are not actively working with congressional offices to split off a bipartisan families bill from the forthcoming budget reconciliation package, containing the remainder of President Biden's infrastructure proposals. One White House aide told Washington Examiner, in line with a two-track approach, the president, as he repeated Friday, wants a child tax credit extended, and we're pursuing that in the budget resolution. The president knows the child tax credit would be a game changer for millions of families and would welcome bipartisan support, but there is not a round of talks happening with Congress about a second bipartisan package. These discussions come after President Biden called on Congress to send an already hashed out bipartisan infrastructure package, which includes $1 trillion to modernize the nation's roads, bridges, airports, broadband, and other physical infrastructure networks, and a larger reconciliation package expected to pass with only Democratic votes to the Oval Office in tandem. What do you think, everybody? Should the Democrats end negotiations already and use the budget reconciliation process to pass a massive infrastructure bill? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Now, senior advisors to the president and a handful of other economic aides are leaving the discussions. Some of the outreach has taken in place via virtual briefings, while some individuals approach the White House. Sahil, the House Problem Solvers Caucus announced that they will back this bipartisan infrastructure framework today. How does their support change the math and the politics around that bill moving forward? That's right, Garrett. And the Problem Solvers Caucus is backing a concept. Uh, they are supporting the $579 billion infrastructure framework that was negotiated in the Senate, endorsed by President Joe Biden. But crucially, that does not have legislative language yet. And as you well know, there is a big gap between supporting a concept and ultimately supporting the legislation. Now, if those 15, uh, you know, if, if the Problem Solvers Caucus uh, endorsement holds. Those individuals were left with the impression that there is potential for a second cross-party package that focuses on expanding child tax credits and family incentive programs. Those individuals say that the main provisions likely to be included in any consensus proposal would be the long-term extension of the child tax credit, as outlined by the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, something Biden's team has made clear is a red line for the president, and a paid parental relief plan, something Republicans favor over the, over the comprehensive paid family plans offered by liberal Democrats. Senior White House officials, including Jen Psaki, repeatedly tell reporters that the president's only red lines are provisions that raise taxes on families, earning less than $400,000 per year, and an action on the subject. Now folks, as the IRS continues to distribute payments as part of the third round of stimulus checks, we are now beginning to see a clearer picture of how the process has gone so far. Tax Authority have confirmed that 163 million payments have been made since the American Rescue Plan was signed into law. Causing the, causing the federal government a total of around $389 billion. A new report from the IRS has also shown how the payments have been distributed, with a surprising amount going to the households that most would consider high earners. In total, 127,751 payments have gone to filers with an AGI of more than $200,000 on their most recent tax return. This group has received a total of $392 million from the IRS. Folks, do you believe that those making over $100,000 and up should receive a Ford stimulus check? Tell me your thoughts on this in the comments below. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate everyone's amazing support. And until next time, have a great day and stay safe. When they turn 65 and when they enroll in Medicare. So, Mr. Borland, you're the acting deputy commissioner for communications for the Social Security Administration. SSA has a budget for staff and other resources. Can you just say a word about what the Social Security Administration does with that money? 
because of its robust vaccination campaign, as well as the importance of every eligible American getting vaccinated, especially as the Delta variant continues to grow among unvaccinated people across the country. By the end of the week, the United States will be nearing 160 million people fully vaccinated, which the President will touch on today as well, which is critically important as fully vaccinated people are protected against the Delta variant. He will also stress how the administration will continue its effort to work with governors, local leaders, and across the public and private sector to get more Americans vaccinated by making vaccines available in more healthcare settings and respond to hotspots. The President will outline five areas his team is focused on to get more Americans vaccinated. One, uh, targeted community by community door-to-door -door outreach to get remaining Americans vaccinated by ensuring they have the information they need on how both safe and accessible the vaccine is. Two, a renewed emphasis on getting the vaccines to more primary care doctors and physicians, something that we've seen as a very successful tactic uh, with reaching groups uh, with lower vaccination rates in the past few months. Uh, three, stepped up ex efforts, which is complementary to my last point, to get vaccines to pediatricians and other providers who serve younger people so that adolescents aged 12 to 18 can get vaccinated as they go for back to school checkups or get ready for fall sports. Four, uh, continue expanding efforts to make the vaccine accessible for workers, access is an area where we've seen as a challenge and one where as we've worked to address it, we've seen increasing rates. So that includes setting up vaccination clinics at workplaces uh, and PTO uh, or time uh, leave that uh, employees can take off uh, to get vaccinated. And finally, expanding our mobile clinic efforts, meeting people where they are and making sure we're taking the vaccine to communities. Another COVID update uh, this week, both Guatemala and Vietnam will be receiving COVID vaccine doses from the Biden-Harris administration. Guatemala will receive 1.5 million doses of Moderna and Vietnam will receive 2 million doses of Moderna. Uh, also today as part of the president's forthcoming executive order on competition, stay tuned, uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced it will engage in a series of rulemakings to increase competition in agricultural industries to boost farmers and ranchers' earnings, fight back against abuses of power by giant agribusiness corporations, and give farmers the right to repair their own equipment how they like. The President's executive order will follow through on a campaign promise by directing USDA to issue new rules under the Packers and Stockyards Act, making it easier for farmers to bring in wind claims, stopping chicken processors from exploiting and underpaying chicken farmers, and adopting anti-retaliation protections for farmers who speak out about bad practices. Second, the EO will uh, direct USDA, USDA to issue new rules defining when meat can bear a product of the USA labels so that consumers have accurate, transparent labels that enable them to know where their food comes from and to choose to support American farmers 